Welcome back. This is the second video for experiment one. Now, you've already seen this number line, and in fact, it was our starting point uh, for looking at measurements in the last video. And what I'd like to do is change it up just a little bit and make it look something uh, more like a ruler, and specifically more like the centimeter ruler that we're going to be looking at. So, if you recall in the last video, I would say often the smallest markings. And uh, when we had the old number line, I was saying, all right, well, the only markings we had were one, two, three, etc. So now I've added additional markings. And if you'll notice, there are nine of them between each one of these, which means that each of these has been cut into 10 intervals. Okay, so we've cut these up into 10 little intervals all the way throughout and I made the middle mark a little bit higher than the others. So the first thing we have to do when we look at this number line is to find out what decimal place is represented by the markers. And we know ones for the big markers, but if we look at the small markers, we say, well, that's zero, that's one. So how would this have to work? Well, this would have to be a tenth. It's one tenth. So that's one tenth, two tenth, three tenths, that's uh, five tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, one. And this line over here would be um, 3.5, right? Three and five tenths. So the smallest marking here is going to stand for tenths, or I can say that the smallest interval is tenths. So if we were going to read here, what is going to be the decimal place of the last digit? If the smallest intervals or markings are tenths, you go one decimal place to the right, hundredths. So those additional markings allow you to go that, it, that one uh, greater decimal place. And this is usually how you're going to see most of the devices that we are going to read. So let's do some practice here. So what value would be indicated by the blue arrow? Well. It's definitely between 1 and 2, so the first number we're certain of is 1. And if we look here, this is 1 tenth, 2 tenth, 3 tenths. So it's between 3 tenths and 4 tenths. So that's going to be 1.3 something. And it's really hard to tell uh, any further than that exactly how much closer it is. Um, maybe it's about 1.36. Uh, maybe about 1.35, it's somewhere there, but you'll again seeing that I'm making an estimate. So I would say any of these values here would be acceptable. 1.35 would be my initial guess, but I could see any of these as being reasonable estimates. How about the red arrow? Well to me it looks like it's right on the line. And again we can't say it's exactly 3, it's an estimate here. So we've already decided that with this marker here, or set of markers, we have to always go to the hundredths place. So the best answer would be 3.00. And you'll notice that that last zero is telling me that's where I estimated. So I'm estimating or guessing at the hundredths place. And then the yellow arrow, well, it's definitely between 5 and 6. Uh, it's definitely between 5.4 and 5.5, and exactly how far along is a little bit difficult. It looks like it's much closer to the 0.4 line, so I would tend to say 5.42 as I look at that. Well, how about 5.415? I mean, it is kind of close to what that would be. And again, you can't do that. You must go to the hundredths place. You don't get a choice on that. So we must go to the hundredths place and that tells us that the smallest markings was in the tenths place. Now you'll notice here if we go ahead and look at this ruler, it's kind of been blown up to make it easier to see, that it's looking very similar to the number line that we saw on the previous slide. Now the ruler that we'll use or the yardstick uh, would be longer and the marks would definitely be more closely spaced and not as widely spaced as for this picture but in all other respects it's going to function the same way. 
The marking that we see over here on the left side is telling us that this is uh, going to be centimeters as the numbered mark. So one, two, three, four. Uh, sometimes it will say mm, and I know that that can cause confusion. Uh, but what you want to remember is when you're using a ruler that your pinky finger is about a centimeter wide uh, for most people and that should be your guideline clearly your finger isn't going to be as thin as one of these markings are right here so if you always use that as a point of reference you should do pretty well now let's take that ruler and blow up the first part of it a little bit more and you'll see what I've done here is just add some numbers that you would not normally see on the ruler. I have gone ahead and explicitly indicated that this is one tenth, two tenths, nine tenths, one and one tenths. Uh, this of course would be 1.0 but I wasn't going to change the way that the ruler looks for that number. So the smallest markings are tenths of a centimeter. So what decimal place do we need to go to? Well, just like that previous number line, if these are tenths, we need to go to the hundredths, and specifically hundredths of a centimeter. So up top here, we have a picture of the very beginning side, uh, or the left side, of a meter stick. So this continues all the way to 100. And here, I have a foot-long ruler but I've got the inches side turned upside down. If I was to keep looking at this, this would go to 30. And you will notice I have these set right next to each other so we can see that each of these markings stands for a centimeter. Uh, again, it might be a little confusing here because we have mm and cm there, but the cm definitely corresponds to the numbered intervals right here. So let's practice taking some measurements with this ruler. So what is the length of the blue line? Well first, before we can measure any lengths, we need to make sure that any lines we are measuring uh, begin right at the beginning of the ruler at 0, 0.00. If you don't begin at the beginning, you would have to take the value of one end minus the value of the other end. And there's really no reason to add that extra difficulty here. So let's take a good look at this. Well, we are between 2 and 3, uh, so we're certain that it begins with a 2. Uh, it's between, this would be 2.3, correct? 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. If you're not clear, always count it out. And 2.4, so we're between 2.3 and 2.4, so we're sure it's 2.3. And then it looks like it's about halfway. So I would say 2.35 would be a uh, good measurement for that line. Uh, and I'm indicating centimeters. That's my unit. I have to have that unit written down if I know what it is. So 2.34 or 2.36 centimeters would also seem fairly reasonable. How about the red line? Well, it looks to me that the red line is ending very, very close to the marker uh, for 4. But even though it's on the line, we have to know what decimal place to go to. We've already committed that we will always go to the hundredths place with this ruler because the smallest markings are tenths. So we would write down 4.00 centimeters. Although I can't really argue with 3.99 or 4.01. How about the yellow line? The yellow line seems like it's going just a little bit further but it doesn't look like it's going all the way to 4.1. So it's between 4.0 and 4.1. So it's going to be 4.0 and it looks about halfway. So I'd say 4.05. And that seems like it would be a reasonable measurement to me. And 4.04, 4.06, certainly also reasonable. Now let's do this with a real ruler. So let's take a, a good look at this. Now if you have any difficulties at all reading this, uh, what you would normally want to do these days is since everybody has a smartphone essentially, just use your smartphone to blow it up or you know use a magnifying glass if you have access to one. And it turns out here on my PowerPoint I can do that. So let's see if I can blow this up just a bit. 
So this is five centimeters, this is six centimeters. The smallest markings are tenths, correct? 5.1, 5.2, 5.3. Notice I'm not even looking at the line yet. I'm worrying about the markings. So if the markings are tenths, that means I'm always going to go to the hundredths place. So that's been decided. And that is forever going to be the case with this ruler. The lines won't move around. So now that we've decided that, whenever we see this ruler, we know that we will go to the hundredths place. And if we forget, we always just go through the exercise of saying what each marking stands for. Well, it's right after the halfway line, which is 5.5, .5, and not quite at the 5.6 line. So it's 5.5 .5 something on the higher end. Uh, if you were to ask me, I'd say, well, that looks its a little bit close to 5.58. And so that's what I would guess at that, 5.58 centimeters. 5.59, 5.57, those also seem reasonable. Same ruler, so we're still going to go to the hundredths place. Let's see if we can blow this up just a bit. So it's between 0 and 1. So it's definitely going to begin with a zero point something. And then if we go ahead and look, uh, here is 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. We're not quite at 0 0.8. So it's definitely going to begin with 0 0.7. And since it's almost at the end, I would say 0 0.79. So that would be what I would record, 0 0.79 centimeters. And let's take a look at this measurement right here, our last one. It's between 3 and 4. It looks like it's right on the 0.5 line, maybe just a hair beyond it. Uh, but I would say it's right on the line. I need to be very careful that I don't just say 3.5. Remember we said we're going always to the hundredths place. So uh, a good measurement for this would be 3.50 centimeters. I could definitely see 3.51 centimeters as also being a good measurement. Now we turn our attention to measuring volume. And the principal device that we are going to use to measure volume is going to be what is called the graduated cylinder. And that does a reasonably good job of measuring the volume of liquids, not to the highest accuracy that we can achieve, there is better equipment for that, but to a level that's very, very good for most of what we want to do. So in order to measure the volume of a liquid, we simply pour it into a graduated cylinder, and the graduations, that's why it gets the name graduated, are the markings on the side of it, and we can just read those markings to figure out what the volumes are. And just like we've looked at with the number line and the ruler, it's going to work essentially the same way, except that now we will have a ruler, so to speak, going from the bottom up. The graduated cylinders that we are going to use in this class measure in milliliters. Now one interesting thing about water and solutions which are made from water, which is going to be the case for most of our solutions in this class, is that they will have a downward curve at the surface of the liquid. Uh, the curve will look somewhat like a bowl, kind of a shallow bowl, and we call that curve a meniscus. Now, when you are looking at a meniscus and you're trying to figure out what the volume is, the general rule that we're going to use is that you always read at the bottom of the meniscus. So for example, let's say that we have a meniscus right here. This is kind of what one might look like. You'll notice it's curved down. It is shaped like a bowl. You want to always read the volume there. That's actually at the middle between the two tips and the lowest point, the bottom. Don't read along the sides and don't read at the top point of that meniscus either. Take a look at this picture over to the right and you see something kind of interesting. What we have in here is water. What we see is that we have a downward uh, curving meniscus. Over here though we have a different liquid. This is the liquid mercury. 
and Mercury has a meniscus which curves up. So what are we going to do? Because while we would read the meniscus at the bottom right there, if there were markings, and I emphasize there are no markings to read here, but that's just showing you what the meniscus looks like, you would actually read at the top of a meniscus if it did curve up. The actual rule is you always look right in the middle. In other words, if it does curve up, it would always curve up right at the center, and that's where we, you would read. And if it curves down, it would curve down right at the bottom. So we're going to always be reading at the bottom. Is it likely that you will see mercury? Not really, because we try to avoid using mercury as, in as many applications as possible. But there are older blood pressure reading devices which do somewhat uh, use it still. And so you might encounter it. We use the same process that we used for a ruler, and that is before you even look at the meniscus and try to attempt a reading, look at the markings and figure out what the markings mean. Over on our graduated cylinder here, uh, which we haven't shown the whole thing, we're just showing a piece of it, I can just start picking any markings. Well, that's 30 and that's 40, so then what is this line going to be? Well, there's nine of them, so 31, 32, 33. 38, 39, 40. I'm counting by ones, so each of the markings corresponds to the ones place. And the rule works the same. If the markings are to the ones place, we go one decimal place to the right, which is the tenths place. So whenever we use this device, uh, as shown, we are going to go to the tenths place. So we know that the meniscus is clearly between 42 and 43, right? There's 41 there's 42 and there's 43 above it. We have to be careful because sometimes the meniscus will obscure uh, lines above, especially if it's a fairly dark uh, liquid. Uh, and if we take a look, it's very, very close to the 42 line. So it's going to begin with 42 and now we're going to estimate uh, another digit. So it's very close to 42, so I would say either 42.1 or 42.2 uh, milliliters uh, might be good. So 42.2 would be fine, um, even possibly all the way up to 42.3. Remember, that is our uh, estimated digit, the last digit. We are not certain about it. Now let's take a look at this graduated cylinder here. This is meant to represent a different device. So let's see what we've got here. So this is 6. This is 7. So what do these lines have to be? If that's 6 and that's 7, well then this has to be 6 and 1 tenth, 6.1. 6 and 2 tenths, 6.2, 6.3. So what am I counting by? 6.1, 6.2, 6.3. I'm counting by tenths. And following the usual rule, we go one decimal place to the right. One decimal place to the right of the tenths would be the hundredths. So we would always use the hundredths place for a device that looks like this. Now where is the meniscus here? Hmm. So here's 5. That's 5.5, 5.6, 5.7, 5.8. And we know that there's a line back there that's being obscured. So it's between 5.8 and 5.9 because it's being blocked but uh, it's definitely closer to 5.9. And so that means we're going to get 5.8 and then a high number. So something like 5.89 would probably be a very good reading here. Um, 5.88, 5.90, those also seem acceptable if we were to take a look at them. Here are pictures of the three graduated cylinders uh, that we will be using uh, throughout this class. Let's see if we can blow them up just a bit and get a closer view. So this graduated cylinder right here is called the 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. Notice what is its mark smallest markings? Well, here we have 9, 10, so we've got those lines in between. Those are tenths, so 9.1, 9.2. So if those are tenths, we will always go to the hundredths. And that's something you should probably make a note of. Whenever you use the 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, you will always go to the hundredths place. 
because the smallest markings are tenths. Here we have a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder and we have a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. And if we take a look at the markings here, uh, here we have 40, here we have 50, and we've got our nine markings in between, so 40, 41, 42. Uh, these are counting by ones, so therefore we would go to the tenths always when using the 50 ml graduated cylinder. We notice the same thing for the 100 ml graduated cylinder. So we've got 80 here, 90 here. The lines are definitely closer together, um, which makes it a little harder to read. But if that's 80, that's 81, 82, 83, I'm counting by ones, so we always go to the tenths. And that's going to be what a lot of your grade will be on these first experiments, is are you reading to the correct decimal places and coming up with correct values. So 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, always read to the hundredths place. The other two graduated cylinders, always read to the tenths place. All right, so what I would like you to do here is something similar to what we did just a moment ago with the rulers. And that is, go ahead, and I've got here three different diagrams. And what I would like you to do is first look at the, the markings on each of these and figure out what decimal place you should go to. So, for example, 40, 50, so 41, 42. I'm counting by ones, so we would always go to the, well, you know the answer to that now. So I'll let you do that. This one over here is a little bit different from ones that we've seen, but it shouldn't be too tricky if you follow the rules. So what I'd like you to do is uh, pause the video and then write down the correct readings for each of these. Now, in reality, you would never see uh, meniscuses uh, like this for a single solution. You wouldn't see multiple ones. So I'm just drawing these uh, so you can practice making your readings, but you'll always have only a single meniscus on here. So I want you to go through here, find the value, and uh, write it down. The units on all of these is milliliters, so definitely remember to write down the unit as you go. Okay. So at this point, I'm assuming you've gone and written down the values. If not, again, pause the video a little longer till you're finished. But let's go through here. So each of these markings, 40, 41, 42, is going to represent a ones place. And therefore, we will read always to the tenths place, one decimal place to the right. So if we look at A, uh, this is 45 here. This is 46. So we're between 46 and 47. Looks like it's a little closer to 46 uh, to me. So I would say 46.2 or 46.3 would be a good reading milliliters as the unit. This one looks to be on the line. Uh, so if it's on the line, it's going to be 30.0. Don't forget, you must go to the tenths even when they're on the line same situation occurs down here. It looks like we're right on the line for 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we wouldn't write down 15, we'd write down 15.0. Okay, new measuring device, so we have to reassess what decimal place we're going to go to. 5, 6, in between are tenths. Each one of those lines stands for a tenth. So therefore we estimate to the hundredth. All right, so let's take a look here. We've got 4, 4.5, 4.6. It's between 4.6 and 4.7, uh, a little bit closer to the 4.6. So I'm guessing about 4.63 ml would be a, a good estimate for that. How about here? Be very careful that you're counting in the right direction. I know some people go 4, 4.1. Don't do that. Always make sure you know which side is up. So if Going from the bottom, 3, 3.5, 3.6, 0 0.7, 3 0.8. It's between 3.8 and 3.9, much closer to 3.8. So I'm going to say 3.81 here. Um, I could definitely see 3.82 and possibly even 3.83 as being good readings for that one. 
And here we're on the line again. So we have to be especially careful that we go to the correct number of decimal places. We've already established that we're going to the hundredths place. So 2.00. We filled in the zeros to the hundredths place. Okay, let's take a look at what we have here. So 600, 700, uh, what's, so those are hundreds, so that would mean that each of these lines are tens. So 600, 610, 620, 630, 640, 650, etc. So if each of these lines are tens, you go one decimal place to the right, which would be ones, not hundredths, right? We're not saying tenths tens and the decimal place to the right of tens is ones. Okay, so 700, 710, 720, 730, 740. Uh, it's going to be 740 something, uh, probably 741 or 742 mLs um, because it looks very close to the line. How about H? We've got uh, 550, 560, 570, uh, so 570 something, probably 572, 573 mLs would be reasonable. And then this looks to be right on the line for 450. Uh, so I'm going to say 450 with a decimal point, and we'll talk again a little bit more about that decimal point later, but what it's doing is it's telling me that that zero uh, is the estimated digit and not the 5. So we'll talk about that when we get to significant digits. Finally, let's take a look at measuring temperature with a thermometer. So a thermometer is quite similar to everything else that we've used in terms of the way that we read. Uh, the only thing is sometimes our thermometers look a little bit strange. They might have numbers that are split like this. And so just understand that this is just 10, 20, 30. Uh, I don't show this right here, but sometimes on our thermometers you'll see it'll go 80, 90, 0, 10. So clearly above 90 is not 0, that's 100, and then that 10 would not be 10, it would be 110. So uh, just be very careful to take a good look at the readings uh, before you uh, actually interpret the, what the value means. So same general process here. Uh, so the smallest markings here are 1. Um, right? We've got 30, 40, so this would be 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So if I'm counting by ones, uh, we would always estimate to the tenths place. Now assuming that the units are degrees Celsius, what would the reading here be? Uh, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So it's between 24 and 25. Let's say something like 24.2 or 24.3. Uh, would be a reasonable reading and the units there are degrees Celsius. I'm going to go ahead and end this video right here and I will continue on in the next video with measuring mass using a balance. Thank you.